<laughs> yeah, it's short for you. So just thank you for your presentation. So. Let me say what I do. This is I do. It's quite famous. Yeah, I posted uh, uh, a few things. And this is the brushes if you have seen that. And this is the name that you write here. And uh, I think you need to do some, some, something of that. But like this is like more digital things. So like small things like family on age. And this is my NFT. The last one I want to introduce about the uh, ideas. I, when I think of this project, I want to do some fancy things. I was thinking, what is the related to things that can give the flat change to our life? And this idea from where last class, our professor to introduce the whole black state where they come from, they have no information where they do, uh, why they have a price, high price on it. So I see what thing I can do. My call is uh, MBA is a manager. My little people is the most difficult things. In fact, even you have a lot of class in MBA, in factory, factory, something. Finally, you didn't know how to manage to do that, but if I can use the blockchain technology on that, like uh, I want to remove can be recalled. This 
uh, which will be the most buyers. Uh, because it's, it's now, for example, like uh, I see the five percent or uh, uh, half of the drug uh, product, but I don't have a job or any, so I couldn't take money about the drug. It's unfair. And uh, what, how many you can take is uh, depend on your boss, what they say. It's really depend on a person's not fair. But if we can use the black chance, the technologies to recall the every movement, what you did, what you said, what you contributed to the project, it will be fire. And no one will continue and it's public you know, information to show everyone. It just will be the third person. I can take five percent values. So I think we can do that. Satellite in the future, I think maybe I will call me like uh, at in the home, we are just a game players. <laughs> what we do we will be called the cameras, all the spanners. And it's maybe more fair in the future if we do this. This is uh, all my presentation. Hope you would like it. And uh, <laughs> thank you. So Yuna actually uh, talked about some uh, applications of uh, blockchain and NFT in general. So actually today I brought the uh, a tuna from Bumblebee. So now I give it to you guys to check by yourself, but let me just show you on the website before you do presentations. So let me go here, Bumblebee. Trace my catch. So, so let me just put it here. Zero two seven. Two. S. D. Five. S. K. P. So let me just cut two seven two. So hopefully I did it right. So let me see. Okay. So this is the information on my tuna can. So I just give it to you. Guys. So. After you do, you give it to. So the one who has the best presentation today can catch, uh, get, uh, take the tuna home. Okay, so this is the albacore tuna. Uh, the animal uh, weight ranges from 10 to 80 pounds. Um, and it's just you know, uh, information about the tuna. 5% of uh, words tuna catch each year, albacore meat is snowy, white, and has a delicate mild flavor. Actually, I like al albacore. So this is just an general information about the sustainability program and the commitment for uh, tuna fish uh, sustainability. So this is the location that they got this tuna, uh, somewhere in the uh, South Pacific Ocean. You can get other information, like it was near one or two Fiji, the fishery protocol, the stock status. So you, you can even see how they cut the fish. Okay, very interesting. The fisher was, is it he or she? Is Lurung Yuan Yu? Is a, is a guy, so, so so it was a guy from China who went to a, a catching this tuna. So he left on January 2020 and got back June 9th. So he had a very long, I, he, I think he made a very good business, long, long time uh, shipping, uh, I mean, fishing path. Uh, you can even get some information about his vessel. So, 
Yeah, China is a really large country. I cannot ask if you know this guy for sure. There's too many people in China. So, but I think since he did a six month, maybe next year, near six month trip, maybe in the Chinese fishing industry, some people know him. I don't know. But yeah, this is one of the applications. And uh, if you like tuna, you, you, you and uh, you, Shivo and Yuna can just discuss or make a deal, the one who wants to take the tuna home. But anyway, um, let me just open uh, Shibu's uh, presentation. Is that? So, you know, the next step since uh, you have good uh, education in marketing, maybe you can think of how to market your uh, uh, NFT. Actually, university told me, I mean, uh, I think Meredith from School of Management reached me. She wants to point which students is interested in uh, uh, NFT. So I did that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, hello everybody. My name is Shibogo and this is my first yeah. yeah, and this is my presentation and my topic is the develop <coughs> the, the development and the limitation of Solana. Yeah. And uh, first is what is the what is Solana? And Solana is a decentralized blockchain built to enable scalable uh, user-friendly apps for the world. And this is the and this world is on the Solana's Office, uh, official website, and in my opinion, I think Solana is like a, is a blockchain platform or ecosystem uh, for some apps which use the uh, SOL uh, as their um, as their currency, and then and that is the history of Solana. And in November November twenty seventeen, and. Uh, mm, uh, and Tali published a uh, white paper dis describing proof of history. And this and this technology, proof of history, is very important for the learner. And it is a technology for keeping time between computers that don't trust one <coughs> don't trust one another. And on December 2018, and Greg is a, is another founder of the Solana. He began <clears throat> prototyping the first open source uh, implementation of uh, of the Anatolis white paper, and uh, they and they uh, <clears throat> and they make a uh, make a project uh, called Loom Together, and this is the uh, prototype of Solana. And in June 2018. And uh, their team scale up the technology to run on closed based networks, and they published uh, <coughs> sorry, and they published a new net network for <coughs> for supporting the uh, twenty uh, two hundred and fifty thousand tra transactions per second, and this is the Solana website. And why Solana is very hot now? And because Solana use a uh, technology is the proof of history is very important. <laughs> yeah. And this technology <clears throat> reach a transaction speed of more than 4,000 times that of Ethereum. And Ethereum is another uh, blockchain platform and, and Ethereum is, uh, and Ethereum was founded very early and before Solana. And while the transaction cost is only one sixty thousandth of Ethereum. So Solana is very hot now. Yeah, and let me introduce the technology, proof of history. The proof of history is a high frequency <coughs> variable delay function. A variable delay function requires a specific number of C6, <coughs> C6, C6, CQ2 steps to evaluate. 
yet produce a unique output that can be efficiently and public and publicly verified. Yeah, and let me show the price of the cost of the Solana experiment is founded about uh, And during this, um, and during this time, um, almost all of the uh, cryptocurrency in the cryptocurrency price increased very high, and and because of there are some other <clears throat> disadvantage of all problem on Solana, the the price has declined, and uh, is is still declining now. Uh, and the and the head of the pride is uh, two uh, two hundred and sixty dollar per SOL. Yeah, then let me introduce the advantage of Solana. The first is the low cost. Solana is one of the cheapest ecosystem. It's an average of is is yeah it, it, it is too low price. <laughs> Per transaction compared to an average of 6.85 per transaction of on Ethereum. Um, benefiting from Solana's low fee extraction, uh, one dollar million, uh, uh, one million dollar transaction will cost about ten dollar in fees, while the same transaction on Ethereum will cost about um, three hundred thousand dollar. So is so um, the Solana is better than Ethereum now. And the next is the highly scalable, um, lower transaction lower transaction fee and faster transaction confirmation can lead to scale, uh, scale, uh, scalability for an underlying public chain. This means <clears throat> being able to support more applications. And the next page is the Solana's Ecosystem, you can see there are so many applications which are the apps on Solana system. Yeah, and it's about uh, the wallet, it's the DeFi, DeFi is the distribution finance, and some like gaming, FTs, and other applications. And I will choose, and I will choose two to introduce. And first is the is the Phantom, which we which we learned on class. The Phantom is a, uh, is a preferred first hosting wallet Solana ecosystem is, and is providing users with services such as security, <coughs> encryption, transaction, token trading, and the pledge and other services. And uh, we have learned Phantom and it has some, it has some browser Browser um, additional uh, plugins like the Chrome e extension we used before, and another and another um, application or a website is a uh, Saucy. Saucy is the biggest NFT platform on Solana. Introduce NFTs with embedding um, license, low its training fees, and real time analysis <coughs> analytics from on-chain data. And this source C, source C is, is similar to OpenSea. It's, it's a, um, it is a blockchain or it's a NFT market. You can buy or sell your own NFT on this website. Yeah, and, that, and then I will introduce some disadvantage. And this, and this disadvantage, <coughs> Mm, look, and disadvantage mm, lets the Solana's the let the SOL's price decline. The first is the continuous instability. As the number of users increased, most people wanted to be the first 
to sell at a high price, to sell SOL at a high price. And when they started trading, the, the courses, congression on the claim and the data overflowed crashed on most nodes, eventually bring the network down for more than 10 hours. Their, their, serve, their serve was broken and, they, and the people can't to sell their SOL immediately. And the second is the last, de <coughs> last decentralized and compared to Ethereum's uh, two, uh, 241,000 validators, the, Sol the Solana ecosystem has only uh, 1,000 validators. Solana requires a high level of node hardware and it achieves uh, vertical scale scaling at the cost of equipment. The, the individuals running Solana nodes and mostly uh, institution and enterprises, which is not <coughs> conduct, conductive to decentralization in the true sense. Yeah, and uh, in a word, when it comes to FT and the decentralized finance space, Solana is one of the world's most popular blockchains. It's a topic that can never be can can never be forget. With the continuous development of blockchain, of blockchain technology, users expect a faster and lower cost trading platform, and Solana meet both requirements. So I think Solana will be more popular um, in the future. Yeah. Thanks. That's all. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, Solana actually is a very good uh, blockchain. It has its some some flaws, as uh, uh, she will point, pinpoint some of them. But the good thing, uh, which I use it for teaching some part of like uh, blockchain ecosystem, such as how to make tokens and NFTs, is it has a very good uh, programming. Uh, which is Rust is kind of like a an option for the people who wants to do fast uh, coding and processing like C. Uh, and at the same time, it's very cheap. And you can do a lot of transaction with the less amount of cars. Uh, so is there any people from Zoom who wants to present today? So if you want to present, just use your mic and uh, let me know uh, that uh, you are interested to present today. Yeah, I don't see any people from Zoom wants to present today. So please, anyway, I should see your presentation as soon as possible. Otherwise, uh, how could I grade you? Uh, anyway. Um, I think for the people who hasn't submitted, I sent an email to say what other topic could be. But again, uh, I recommend to use your topic, not the one that I tell you, but you are more welcome to um, do a project that I uh, just provide for you. I mean, the pro project topic that I provide for you. So anyway, so last lesson of our uh, last lecture is about uh, fine, uh, decentralization of finance, and if I simplify, it has to do uh, long-term investments. So some of you may not be a day trader, so you don't want to be a developer, so just some people just want to do long-term investment. Especially for the people who might have visa issues, long-term investment could be an option, but again, uh, don't consider today class as a financial advice. Uh, is actually, first of all, I'm not sure even I, I can do it for you guys. Second, uh, I'm in terms of legality. Uh, second, it's, very, it's a very hard thing to do. So predicting future is very hard. Yes? Yes, I did a lot of investments. So most of my investments are in the smart contract based uh, blockchain cryptocurrency things, such as Ethereum, Solana, uh, what else? 
almost if you check uh, coin market cap and, and you see that ICP is the one of them. So I, I, I just invested a spot content based cryptocurrency. I, I never invested. I actually did one time, but uh, at this recently I haven't invested in Bitcoin. So if I was uh, the person who could answer, I could be a multimillionaire. So it's very hard to say, very, very hard to say. Uh, what I recommend if you're enthusiastic to this technology and if you think if it's something that helps you, uh, especially many people are international students and sending money might be difficult. If it's legal for them, I think it's a, a good uh, tool for doing international businesses. Uh, but in terms of long-term investments, uh, I, I believe nobody can stay in it. So in terms of short-term investment or day trading, so as I said, uh, the people who are uh, getting a master degree in school of management, there's some courses that you guys can take and it helps you to do day trading. So the courses are not for day trading, but maybe you can just change your project. Like if you take Python programming, uh, machine learning, and statistics, those kind of courses, you could do your final project in day trading. But very hard to say, frankly. Okay, so in terms of investment, you should consider uh, entrepreneurship during a path phase. So first of all, some people have some initial innovations which interrupt the current technologies, such as Netflix. So Netflix, I think it was like maybe five dollars first, and some people believe the technologies and it reached to like I'm not sure what. What is now, but I, I remember it got like $500. So it got 100 times more than initial investment. So after initial interruptions, which people uh, have some good innovation, they usually uh, try to be relaxed and look at the uh, economical rents. So they just want some, some investment and get some annual rents. But again, if they stop, Innovating, they might lose innovation. So, for example, Nokia was a great innovation. They interrupt the cell phone industry. And do you guys remember this phone? Nokia T3. Have you had this phone? Yeah. I had something similar to this phone, but so at the one time, they, they stopped looking, or didn't pay attention enough to the new emerging technologies, like smartphones and iPhone suddenly took the competition. Nokia right now doesn't produce any cell phones, but iPhone, I think the I think they are making the most profit out of the industry. But again, who knows the future? So if they don't keep innovating after a while they might also be a, just a something in the history. But until they do innovations they, you might think of, uh, you might think it could be a good uh, investment. Uh, actually, I, I haven't published one of my papers. It's one of, about long-term investment. But what I think I noticed, the company who invests a lot of money in innovations usually is a good thing for longer investment. So again, about the coins or cryptocurrencies. So for example, uh, she was talking about Solana. Maybe you can look at the Solana's uh, performance in the last one or two years and just do you think they keep investing more and more or not? So on Ethereum project. So you need you just should see if they are just investing more or they just rely on the, the economic events. If you think those projects doesn't do that much of research and innovation, you may not hope for light investment or retain the light investment. But Again, if you are somebody who wants to do light uh, investment, just keep in mind the curve is not a straight. Sometimes just go up and down. So it's not exactly just going up or down. In the long term, it might go up, but many short term it just goes up and down. So it might have a lot of fluctuations. And finance usually have a big role. Men, uh, 
companies focus on economic difference. So most of your uh, finance equations uh, comes in the D systems. So if you are looking for a big return, usually the companies are focusing on economic of rents are not good cases. So finance is not is uh, is not the uh, very same thing. It's just uh, doing moving, allocating, and pricing money and risk. So more risk, more money, or more uh, profit. But sometimes if you, your risk is too high, your profit might be too high or you might use everything. So finance usually doesn't talk too much about innovation interruption. So these are two different things. So but, but what are financial institutions? So they are intermediate agents that exist on the equilibrium money habits. So they main activities on investment, credit allocation, and consulting services. And we have these use cases like bank, insurance, mutual fund, financial advisors, brokers, pension fund, exchange companies, and she will talk about blockchain or cryptocurrency applications of them, but uh, for example, Coinbase app is some used for buying crypto, the exchange company. We also have some uh, decentralized bank right now that they, they can, uh, they do peer-to-peer -peer lending or they provide insurance. So do you guys know about FDIC? Have you heard? FDIC. So FDIC is Federal uh, Insurance for the checking accounts. So especially for the people who just come to United States, just keep in mind, I mean, most of banks have FDIC, but some of them don't. So if they have, I think, I forget the exact amount, I think it's either 250K or 500K. So if somebody hack your account, and which happened to me actually one time, somebody took me took a big money from me, but this was lower than the insurance cap. So bank paid me paid my uh, money in less than a week because somebody hacked my account. So anyway, even we have something like FDIC in the crypto ecosystem. So there's a lot of applications which unfortunately we don't have time to go over that. But I think it brings some entrepreneurship opportunities for you. For example, how to do insurance is a very new topic. Insurance in the crypto space or banking in the crypto space. Oh, I see one time also happened. I wanted to get a loan for buying a house. So I went to a company named of lawyer.com. I, I didn't want to sell my crypto and get loan. So instead of doing that, I said, okay, look at my crypto balance. Uh, could you provide me loan? So it was basically uh, uh, something for supporting that I can pay it off. So they look at the crypto and they said, okay, maybe we take 70 or 80% of the value because it's a volatile asset. And they issued a loan to me. So why I did that, I didn't want to sell my crypto because I, I bought them in a very low price. So if I wanted to sell at the high price, I should pay a lot of tax. But instead of paying tax, I, I, I use it for a, a banking company to get a loan. So these are the general applications of like finance or leisure. So these are most of them, not all of them. So she will talk about some. He believes that the sovereign of that was decentralized. But anyway, generally speaking, Palacio uh, provides a publicly available decentralized ledger. So everybody agrees that on ledger. So who paid money to whom? or who has some money. So I can use it for payment. 
So if you want to pay someone or receive some money from someone, you can do it very fast. Usually blockchain is much faster than legacy banking system. And you're, you're independent from them. You can just send money to everyone in a matter of seconds for some good uh, blockchain technology. And a smart contract. So you might have made a very uh, basic application Solana uh, blockchain. So just made a calculator, which has some basic function of plus subtraction divisions. But these are just with the most basic application we could make as long as you can define a uh, smart contract on the blockchain you can make a very advanced contract of uh, programs like such as programs for lending money uh, insurance so on so forth questions so far okay i put some of the some of the interesting companies for example bridge so look at what they do on the website. Well, even they don't support me and I don't have any account for uh, basically collaboration with them. I just got from the website. He's showing your crypto from exchange hacks as never been easier with crypto shifts, only uh, regulated and uh, the insurance bank for the capital investment. So right now, if uh, actually some exchange company is good, tells us. Uh, for uh, supporting your money against hack, but also you can pay to this company to do it, uh, have insurance for your uh, wallets. Look at this one. This is uh, a lending or semi banking uh, company. So basically, through them, you can uh, lend money to someone and get interest, but your interest will be in the crypto. Again, some of them may not uh, live forever, or some of them might be a bankrupt, but at least uh, what I'm saying is from what they say. Also, this is another one. So look, Civic Wallet now offers $1 million FDIC like insurance for your crypto. So we have some, they claim that they uh, provide insurance for your crypto wallets against hacking or other uh, malicious behaviors. In terms of, uh, I think if, you, if someone wants to do international trades, these products are really good because they might have a lot of transactions, so they prefer to have some kind of issues. So there are two types of, uh, or two application regulations uh, that comes from government for finance. So there is some part of regulation for financial stability. For example, governments uh, take uh, always worried of inflation and, inter uh, and basically, job market in the country. So what they can do, the easiest way is through monetary policies, such as regulating inflation and interest rate. So for example, right now, we have so many, some increase in the interest rate. It started from 2021 and even 22. So do you guys know uh, what was the effect of uh, increase in the uh, interest rate in the United States? So if you want to be a cryptocurrency investor, you should pay attention to these things a lot. These are very important things. So, so the interest rate increase from 2021 to 2022, is that Yes, 7-8% range. Somebody believe it's more than that. But anyway, so... The, what the U.S. government did, so they were worried of a lot of inflation because it affects everyone. So they increased interest rate. So what happens? So, so many money. So there is so, so much of money in the market. And when you increase the interest rate in the banking system, 
the large investor think of lowering the, the risk because what they think is based on risk and reward equilibrium. So if you increase the uh, interest rate in the banking system, since the risk is the lowest one, so they may uh, redirect their money from markets to the banking system. So what happens, uh, it, uh, it, it prohibits inflation, at least in the short term. After COVID-19, United States printed so much of money. What I mean printing? Issuing. So they don't have a printer that does print. So they make a lot of money in the market without any economical activities. So it made a lot of inflation in the US. I think it was not just in the US. I believe it happened in Europe and maybe Japan. I'm not sure about China. So did China, Chinese government issue money for the people? No. So yeah, I'm not sure. Unfortunately, I'm not. Uh, I'm. I do not uh, very inf uh, that much information about China, but at least it happened to US. So when they, you print too much money, it just makes inflation because money is. Uh, people have so much of money, so they invested in the cryptocurrency. So it made the Bitcoin price near to sixty k. Some of them invested in, uh, let's say housing market, because uh, the interest rate for get, buying a house was very low, so it uh, make a lot of inflation in the housing market. And almost every market that you build. So inflation, somehow uh, low inflation might be good for economy in long term, but high inflation may destroy economy. So it, what happened in Venezuela, I think Central Africa and Iran, so they had a lot of inflation that destroyed the uh, the economy. Another type of so again, let's say in the summer the government won again reduce the inflation rate. Sorry, reduce the interest rate. I would definitely say buy as much as crypto you want. So because if when they reduce uh, interest rate, people who invest. I mean, people or institutions who invested money in the banks, they take the money out of banks and invest in the uh, alternative markets. One of them could be a stock market, another one could be crypto. So you we expect a lot of inflation in the crypto market or housing market or any market that you think. But uh, let's say if today the US government say that we want to double the interest rate, I would say all the markets would uh, crashed because people take money from every possible market to the lowest risk market, which is banking system. So again, if you want to be a, at least midterm investor, you should look at the fi uh, financial regulations that comes from government or what they want to say. So Again, so I know that some of you want to be invested, so just check the, any governmental news that uh, uh, you could get. Even before that, Chinese governmental ban on cryptocurrency made a crash on the market. Okay, I think they said it's illegal, so so many Chinese investors, they sold the crypto because it was banned, so it made a crash. So government might affect Every market, one of them is a cryptocurrency market. So protecting public. So again, I just talked about Chinese uh, government claim against cryptocurrency. So they wanted to protect their public or people against that uh, threat of the cryptocurrency is access what they claim. Uh, also, the, we have strong uh, regulation in the United States against uh, mon monopolies. So they don't want to uh, have co companies that control everything. So if there's a monopoly, a uh, US government would break those companies in the pieces, but they don't want a company just uh, overtake whole of one industry. Another one, we're making illicit activities and fraud. So money laundering. So uh, money laundering regulation in the US is a fraud to be a fraud.
So in finance or fintech, technology uh, has a big role. We talk about technology in the finance, uh, I think, a few weeks ago. But just as a very really quick example, uh, first we have some, I mean, line. I mean, hundreds of thousands of years ago, it was a coin. So look at the size of the coin. I think it's even hard for like two or three people to just move the coin. So it was the right stuff. So the, I, maybe I shouldn't say coin, it was the mean of uh, exchange values or for trading. Or this Babylon ledger is for uh, just keeping uh, uh, accounts of uh, goods. I think I. I can say it was about the time efficiently, not some other item. So then we went to the eras that we could put uh, basically mint coins. Then China invented uh, paper money, uh, maybe like about 2000 years ago, if I don't make a mistake. Then cryptocurrency, and now in the, we are uh, uh, in the latest era, which you have decentralized cryptocurrency based. <laughs> FinTech technology. So, uh, in the first slide, I talk about disruption. So, disruptions in technology might be some opportunities for you guys. So, these are the uh, current or maybe near future disruptions, artificial intelligence. So, using uh, machine learning algorithms for uh, credit scores or risk allocation. So when you apply for a credit card, uh, most of the time there's a software which has machine learning algorithm inside of it. They could estimate what would be your credit value and they dedicate some credit lines to your place. So there are so many applicants. It doesn't, it's, it's not economical for them to hire people to manually evaluate your credit. So usually they do it through software. Or trading, in one of the terms they talk about day trading using machine learning, which if you remember, Ethereum project was just a beginning of uh, trading, so which you just got information. Fraud detection is also one of the most important ones. Have you guys ever had a phone call from a bank that they were worried about some transaction or account? So I think that has some time. So, Sometimes some transaction might happen on your bank account. So they suffer wrong and they guess it could be a fraud transaction and they might call you. Sometimes a person calls you, sometimes you get an automatic call and they ask you to check your uh, bank transaction. So all of them are through artificial intelligence or chat boxes. Even now, US government uses chat boxes. So uh, if you, uh, one of the cases, USCIS, so it's a US institution for immigration. So when you want to chat, when you want to talk with them, chat is one of the easiest one and you chat with a robot. So if your case gets more difficult or the robot cannot solve it, so a, an a human agent will talk with you. So the first step is talking with artificial intelligence in government. Blockchain and more specifically smart contracts, uh, bitcoins. What? There is like a bitcoin. Some of the smart contracts are similar to bitcoin, they just are for transactions, but some of them you can install a smart contract and do programming, which you can do loans, insurance, also. Cloud is getting old, but it still could be an opportunity for disruption. I can tell you one old disruption, which was electronic payment that Elon Musk was one of the early inventors. It was not invented by Elon Musk, but he had a, a lot of contribution, especially from PayPal. Uh, he got millionaires from PayPal. He used those money to reinvest in a new project, and now he's a billionaire. Questions so far? So I put some uh, statistics here, like for example, total debt balance and decomposition. So in the US in 2021, the first debt part, I mean, the biggest debt is from mortgage. Maybe second is a student loan, then maybe third is no, then auto loan. 
long tail or long code. This just means you, if you want to uh, use uh, in, uh, innovative technologies, what would be the largest market for it? Maybe more cash would be one. Which I said is at least I work with the company that look at my crypto balance and they issued long code. Number of accounts. So KPK is the first auto loan, mortgage, uh, uh, home equity. So HS stands for home, home equity. So these are just show the, your possible markets that you can target. So number of new and generous accounts. Uh, so the little is number of closed accounts. So it's half, we, have, we have some reduction. So the only increase in, uh, I think the new accounts, so the blue ones, the new accounts, we have a high increase on top of them. So I talked about governmental uh, affects or governmental regulation that might affect the market. We also, you should also, Take care of the general uh, economic situation, not just what government might do. So, for example, we had Great Depression, which made a very uh, large crash in the stock market. And I mean, stock market crash was one of the reasons for that bank failures and government policy. So, a long time ago, I made a lot of uh, uh, side effects all around the world, not just US. Then Great Recession 2007-2009. I'm not sure if you guys remember that. So it was a big hit in the United States. The reason, the, some of the reasons are uh, predatory lend, uh, lending, housing bubbles, poor risk management by some uh, bank uh, institution, bank institution, which, for example, they made the, they easily give so many credit loans to the people who couldn't pay. And low resilience, so it was failures upon failures. So so many, it was a cascade effect. Which so many uh, uh, banking institutions bankrupt, and now we are in the COVID recession. So lockdown was one of the reasons. Money printing and inflation. So the government prints so much money. Uh, also, recently in the recent months, we have a big increase in the interest rate. So the money was, some of the money even was in the cryptocurrency market that uh, moved to the uh, banking system where they pay more interest. How was COVID, uh, do you just have COVID recession in China? So is, have, does it, uh, could it affect the economy? Oh, Thank you. Thanks for the information. But anyway, sometimes you have a very good project. I think it brings some innovation, but you should take care of governmental, uh, government decision, also general economy situation. All of them might affect. So these are the entrepreneurship opportunities, which I think if you, uh, maybe you pick the one that is most relevant or interesting to you, and do your investment. So, especially when you, you're a student, you might have to find a good amount of time. So I think it's, I think there's a, uh, the regulation in the US, in the first two semesters, you cannot have an internship. And instead of doing internship, you can at least pick one opportunity and do your own research and work or study. So, economic grants, payment system, the center, which I'm sure we'll talk about some of them. 
instantal risk profit equilibrium, insuring mainly or blockchain adoption. You could be a blockchain uh, developer, so you have some companies to uh, uh, bring blockchain their supply chain or other parts of the uh, uh, company, and or you do consulting services. So I think these could be the opportunities that you might have in the uh, next few years in the uh, blockchain industry. So having said that, uh, not all the projects could. If you might remember, the case, I said maybe uh, 70 to 80 percent of the startups or promises in the blockchain cryptocurrency are fake, or at least they don't have a real product. They just promise. So. I'm a maximalist in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I've seen lots of time, but I think it's uh, my duty to also show you some bad cases that people lose a lot of money. I, I don't want you guys to be uh, to lose some money, especially this course first was mostly on uh, technical part, but we have to change it on some general uh, macro financial prospect. Um, let me show you some stories. I paused the recording, but I put the link in the PowerPoint because of uh, YouTube uh, copyright regulations. I cannot record and post it on my YouTube channel, but let me pause the recording and show you some examples of people who lose money in any investment, one of the could be crypto. So let me stop pause. Yeah, as I said, some projects uh, might easier to depict. Like if you see hidden the cat or Ponzi scheme, I think somehow it's easier to understand. So if you don't see that much of innovation, you shouldn't expect too much of return. Some, some people promise for innovations, but they're fake. So maybe it needs a, a, a little more uh, investigation or much more investigations anyway. So she had, she had a very good education. She had a, uh, I mean, publicly known company, uh, but in the background, she would just had the uh, multi-level marketing scheme. And uh, it was hard for millions of people to understand this is a, just a scam. And they lost $15 billion. And you 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 saw some people they invested there from uh, buying their selling their houses or livestock and they got bankrupt so bad so again these are very hard things so sometimes line investment sounds easy but uh, it might look easy it may not be easy sometimes you might be lucky you invest in very innovative company uh, who makes you rich, but there's so many cases that you might lose a lot of money. So just keep in mind, uh, lighter investment just looks easy. It may not be very easy. I mean, it may not be very easy for getting a lot of money. So you can easily lose money. But at the end, just keep this uh, equilibrium in your mind. More risk, more reward, less risk, less reward for the legitimate investments, not scams, not Ponzi scheme, not hidden the cat investment scheme. So you might see, sometimes you see very good projects. They had a lot of innovations, but they lose uh, for a competition. Or sometimes their marketing plan is not good or tokenization is not good, like ICP. So that was a very good project, but because of uh, something, something that was out of innovation, like marketing tokenizations, uh, in, people lost millions of dollars in that project. But these are very hard thing. But anyway, uh, me, uh, me as an investor, I made a good amount of money to cryptocurrency investment, but I have so many friends even myself, I lost some money, some investments. So I don't want you guys to be uh, losing money. And again, my purpose for this course was not investment, but we have to change it. So uh, my intention was making you more technical. 
But I'm glad that you got some technical background. For example, what does hash function works? Um, some of you know how to do NFTs and like use marketing skills to promote your NFTs. Some of you at least understand the overall like technical overall technical uh, tools behind the blockchain. And you might hopefully if you end up uh, getting a job in an institutions, you at least you can have you can talk about this technology. You have some background knowledge. It was my pleasure to have all of you guys, but I, we have some students over Zoom. I'm not sure if you guys have questions. Uh, I wait a Is little bit. Professor, I have a question. Sure. Yeah, uh, may I have the record my presentation, upload model or email to you? Yes, please upload to model. If it's a YouTube link, provide a link. If it's a video presentation, upload the, your file and also your uh, PowerPoint file. Okay, thank you so much, Professor. You're welcome. Yeah, I don't see any more questions. Again, uh, we are going to have a, a new lab in the Kirk University, the Blockchain Cryptocurrency Lab. So whenever it uh, gets ready, you guys can, you're more than welcome to join and do your experiments. And that was for this semester. It was a very compact one. It was my first time to have in such a compact semester. Uh, but my pleasure, uh, please uh, finalize your submissions, either your assignments or project. But good semester. Thank you very much. So the, there's not that much of you in the class, but you can take as much as chocolate you want or uh, make a decision who takes the two now. So it's for you guys to, you can take home and just look at the uh, blockchain code. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. So Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Han. Thank you. It was my pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you. It has been a great course. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.